Hello everyone, uh, this is Dr. Popular with Torque Magazine and you are watching the Torque Social Hour for uh, November 3rd or 4th, I can't, I can't remember, but first, first episode of November, yay! Uh, this is a weekly live stream where we talk about WordPress, uh, web development, uh, open source, and life during the pandemic because, you know, it's hard to separate life from all those other things right now. So uh, we're going to talk about it all live with my co-host, Anthony Burchell. Anthony, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Doc. Thanks for having me. Anthony, you are the, uh, you, 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 you are, I always forget the title and I, you've been doing this so many times. You're with WP I'm on Engine the, Labs. I, I'm on the, the WP Engine Labs team. Yeah. So I spend a lot of my time in the community and, uh, and doing things, fun things like this. So, yeah. And uh, and you haven't mentioned anything yet, but yeah, I do have a new camera, Anthony, uh, based on your suggestion. Hey, uh, Doc, is yeah. that a new camera? <laughs> oh, <laughs> this, this whole thing? Yes, uh, I got the <laughs> Logitech uh, C930E. Which one do you have again, Anthony? You, ooh, mine's the C920, you've got oh, 10 up on me. Mine is 10E better than yours is what I'm hearing. Uh, I'm not, <laughs> no big deal. But yeah, the C920E or 30E, and there's actually like a C950, and there was a point where I was on Amazon trying to figure out how professional I am <laughs> because there's like there's like sixty to three hundred dollars, and I'm like, uh, I think I think I am like at the one fifty dollars. There comes value. a certain point when your bandwidth is just not enough to even put out the full capability of the camera, and it's like, why do I need that big fancy camera? And the, the 920's doing me well. <laughs> <laughs> and I think with with all of that non WordPress talk, let's uh, let's introduce our our special guest for this episode, uh, Mr. Brad Williams, who is the CEO and co-founder of WebDevStudios.com, and the co-author of the professional Word book WordPress book series. Brad, how are you doing today? I'm doing awesome. How are you guys doing? I'm I'm well. I'm glad to be here. This is going to be fun. So my uh, camera mm -hmm, is yeah. built into my MacBook. So how do I look? <laughs> yeah, actually, it looks great. I th I thought you had something fancy. <laughs> I do have a ring light, so I had to upgrade my lighting a little bit. So I have a ring light on me. So I think that's helping. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm just using the built-in one. I can't get away with the ring light. It always picks up on the glasses. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a lamp with two sheets of white paper taped to it to diffuse it, and it's still too harsh. Uh, but yeah, that's my that's my lighting. It's very diffused. I got a uh, uh, I got a, a new smart light so that I can control the amount of light that I'm shooting at my face for these sorts of things. It's a recent upgrade. <laughs> lighting makes a big difference. Like I have a lot of natural sunlight. My desk faces a window if I'm facing this way. Um, and during the day, it's very hard to have like good lighting. You know, I know some people black out the windows, but I like sunlight, right? But it's hard when you have sunlight coming in to keep it nice you know so i finally brought about the ring light it works well i have a plant to keep alive so i need that light <laughs> <laughs> we work better in dungeons some of us some of us maybe not. <laughs> so so let's let's dive into it um we were talking before the show and i think the thing that we were most excited about covering this week uh is five for the future and web dev studio um what they're doing for five for the future i'm gonna share uh this recent tweet uh don't be spooked um uh this was a halloween tweet uh don't be spooked it's just another five for the future at uh, web dev studio tomorrow conveniently right before halloween we'll be spending our work day giving back to wordpress and maybe even hold a halloween costume check out our latest contributions uh this is something uh, anthony and i thought was a really cool tweet oh let me like it yes uh and uh yeah um you know brad as the ceo of, of web dev studios what can you tell us about this this announcement and what y'all are doing for five for the future yeah so um if you're not familiar anybody watching the show i would assume most probably are um but five for the future is basically an initiative that matt mullenweg kind of threw out there it's been a while now, six, seven years maybe. Um, and the idea of it is very simple. It's if, if companies contribute, people that make money off of WordPress, whether it's an individual or a company of any size, but if, if we all contribute 5% of our time, our professional time, right? I'm not talking like just your free time, but if you uh, dedicate 5% of your uh, professional time to contributing to WordPress, imagine like how far that would help take the project, you know, across the board. Cause there's just so many like literally millions of people that are 
um, you know, have professional careers based around WordPress. They work in WordPress every single day. We know it's an open source software project. Um, and the only way that that works is if people contribute. Um, so uh, Matt put it out there to the community community and said, hey, you know, we'd really like people to uh, to take part of this. You know, it's 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 really just an unofficial thing that we do. It's gotten a little more official in the last year or so. But um, so we said, great, you know, we were already doing a lot of stuff um, kind of informally um, at Web Dev Studios in, in terms of contributing, whether it's contributing to the core of WordPress. Um, but I think a lot of people assume when you talk about contributing, that means exactly that, like writing code, but that's not necessarily the case. I mean, we touched on a pre-show too, but like, you know, we used to speak at a lot of events um, early on, WordCamps, local meetups. We, I mean, I organized, I started the New Jersey meetup. I started the Philadelphia meetup. Um, I'm still in the Philadelphia meetup 10 years later. Um, you know, I helped organize all the WordCamp Philly, well, the first five WordCamp Phillies, you know, so that's contributing. That's contributing to WordPress. Um, so we love the idea of five future because it put a little more formality around how we do it as a company um so ever since then we've dedicated um five percent of our time approximately you know it's it's hard to get exact sometimes we're over maybe sometimes we're under but uh, five percent of our time as a company contributing back and the way we're doing that today we tried it a lot of different ways right we have about 40 people at our company um the way we're doing it today is we do an entire day one one friday a month the entire company contributes um we've done it differently where people pick the day or doing smaller teams um but we really like what we found is it's really fun when we get the entire company in together um you know it becomes more of a company event we've seen a lot more uh, collaboration between team members and how they're contributing um we've gotten a number of team members that have never touched wordpress core to actually you know buddy up with someone who has and, and contribute and get props um, so it's, we've seen a lot of really cool benefit by doing it that way. And from a scheduling standpoint, it makes it easier too, right? Like our PMs, like we tell our clients we're closed for internal, internal work, um, and contributing to WordPress. So, um, we're technically, you know, closed for client work. Obviously we're there for emergencies, but, um, I mean, it's, it's awesome. Happy to talk more about it cause I'm really passionate about it. Um, like I said, we've been doing it for years. I've, I tallied up the time recently. Um, we, we've contributed over a million dollars in billable work, um, that we've tracked, you know, in our in our tracking system over the years to to five for the future specifically. And I know our team our team's gone up way above and beyond even that because again we have organizers on our team, which you guys have been there. Um, organizing is almost like a full time job <laughs> if you're organizing a yeah. work camp, especially like the month leading up to it, right? So they're you know they're going above and beyond even what we're tracking at Web Dev. But um, yeah, it's it's just a cool initiative, one we're pretty passionate about. That's something I found. Uh, so my my day job is uh, is doing that very thing, is contributing, and I spend about one day a week uh, just full time on core, and then a few more hours throughout the week uh, as it's needed for like meetings and things like that. But uh, during the Five for the Future initiative, that was one of the things we found is like, wow, we're we're already doing so much, and there's a lot of it that it's just impossible to track. Like those mm -hmm. organizing hours are, are many dozens of hours. Just in the time that I put in WordCamp Austin, was just many dozens mm -hmm. of hours that we're not going to track because it's just not like it's just part of the job of organizing. And it's one of yeah. those things where it's just it's hard to to track it because it's it's uh, just in organizing as the example, it takes over your life for a little while. Uh, and then once it it's over, then you get time to recover. Um, yeah, it's, but it's it's really interesting, like how how you how you have the whole team working on this. Mm -hmm. So, what have you had any like business learnings through that? Like, what what are the, some of the areas that you found like folks that maybe they're not like uh, core, uh, I guess, code contributors, but maybe like have they found their niche or like something that sparks them or makes them excited? Yeah, so um, obviously we have a lot of developers at our co at our company. You know, we build WordPress sites, but we also have a lot of non-developers too. We have project managers, um, we have our leadership team. You know, so um, what we found is um, one way we we get people involved initially if they're not familiar, because we hire people that have never done this before, right? This is new to them, even developers to an extent. Like if they're not really, you know, quote unquote, in the WordPress community, and this is kind of new to them. Um, you know, they've heard of it. They they understand the idea of it. They just haven't done it, right? So with the non-technical positions, well, I shouldn't say non-technical. Even our PMs are technical, but the non-developer positions, generally, we'll, you know, we'll ease them in. Like, say, hey, why don't we work on some documentation together? Or um, let's dive into support forums and, and see if we can help answer some questions or point people in the right direction where they can get some help. 
um, things like that. A lot of it's around like meetups and, and, and uh, uh, well, I, I should say it was <laughs> more. It's, it still is to an extent, mm-hmm. but every, with everything going virtual, obviously that's changed a bit, but um, that's always been a big one. Cause I always, I'm a big proponent of like, you know, help, help elevate your local community. Right. I, I guarantee you there's a local meetup or something in the area that's WordPress focused. You'll meet other people that are into WordPress. Some people will know more than you. You'll know more than other people. Like you just all help each other, you know, and you're all local and you want to help each other. So that's always just a great way to get in. And, and it's also a good way for people to get more familiar with WordPress for, w- within our company, not just at the code level either, but just like the project and understanding how the tool works and, you know, the areas that people struggle um, that we might take for granted because we're in there every day, but an average user is not. So some things that we think are intuitive are not. Um, so done a lot of different stuff but again like we even my my idea of contributing back is just doing something that you're going to you know make pu- make public or contribute back in a public way at some point right so it doesn't even have to be like something that's done that day i always say look if you want to write a plug and release it cool but don't feel like you have to release it by 5 p.m the same day right the goal is <laughs> at some point you're going to release it when it's ready but maybe it's not ready on this five for the future you know um or maybe write a blog post because it's just sharing knowledge is, is contributing you know, so write a blog post either on our blog, which we're pretty passionate about. We've got a lot of great content or on your own blog, but find a topic that's re- related to the type of stuff we're doing here and write a great blog post. Share your knowledge. Another great way to contribute back. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I love that it's uh, uh, on Fridays because that gives it really good alliteration. Uh, Fridays for the future sounds good. If you if you <laughs> yeah. do it over burgers, uh, then it could be fries for the future. Uh, if you leave the burgers out too long, uh, you know, then you're going to have flies for the future. Uh, you know, if, put some thought into this. If some, I've been typing while y'all have been talking. If, uh, <laughs> if, if a giant comes by and you have to hide, it's fee five Fridays for the future. Okay, so I'm done with that. That's fee five. That's pretty oh, good. Man, that's uh, clever. <laughs> yeah, that. that was great. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That's now, a, that's, I mean, I, I I encourage more companies to do it too because now that WordPress.org's gotten a little more official, you can like actually submit your company and your and your team members with their .org profiles and and list how much time you contribute. Um, you know, we are very proud of it. So, I mean, we it's it's on every proposal we send out the door that we contribute back to WordPress and we dedicate five percent of our time because it doesn't it shows that. This isn't, you know, yes, it's a job and yes, people are hiring us to do that job. But it also shows that we have a passion for what we do, because why else would we contribute back to the project if if we didn't? You know, so it shows we actually care above and beyond just that one client project that we're talking about. It's that we actually care about the open source ecosystem around WordPress and we're doing what we can um, in the capacity that we can to, to help, you know, to help uh, make that better and to continue to grow the platform and to grow the, the users on the platform. So. Um, so there's, I mean, just a lot of wins, you know, it's like win, win, win. I, you know, people talk to me about it, like, how do you, you know, that's, you're writing off a lot of money and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know, there's, there's so many like benefits to it. Yeah. There, you could look at it and say, well, that's some billable time I didn't get, but honestly, like probably one of the best benefits outside of just helping the WordPress project, one of the biggest benefits that might be a little unseen is just, um, uh, taking a break from the client grind for the team, you know, like taking a day off from client work and doing something you're passionate about. Like it's hard to put a, put a price tag on it. It's hard to understand how impactful that is, but it is cause it's a total mental break, you know? Um, and as, as much as we, you know, for good reason, talk about mental health and things like that these days and, and self care and all of that for, again, for good reason. Um, you know, just having that one day a month that people can look forward to and say, you know what, I can, I can shut off slack. I don't have to look at my email and I can work on this plugin that I've, I've really wanted to get out the door and ship. And it's just been a passion project. And I just haven't had any free time. And today's the day I'm going to do it. You know, like that just, it kind of helps reset a little bit and with, and, and help with that client grind, you know? So that's a big benefit that, um, I didn't initially think about that we've seen over the years. You know, our team just loves it. You know, they love it. And like you said, it's on a Friday. So what better way to go to the weekend? <laughs> yeah. I, I used to, so uh, at, at WP Engine for my contribution time, um, even before I was officially in this like uh, uh, WP Engine Labs capacity of like 
officially being given to- this time to work on core, uh, I was allowed to uh, spend time just once a day or once a week on a Wednesday. And it was it was the full eight hours of my day where I got to just focus on WordPress core. And that actually translated to when my job officially became that to where I could work from home on Wednesdays. And now I work from home every single day, so I don't get a choice. <laughs> but I really did look forward to those Wednesdays mm-hmm. where I could stay home, make my own work environment. And I was not... I was working for everyone else, so working for the for the community and just kind of checking in on core and those things. And it was just, it felt like almost like I had a second job and I, I liked that a lot. That was kind of interesting where I could I could finally like work without thinking about like, oh, what what, what money return are we getting from this? Like the money return obviously comes with it. Like your, your name is out there in the community as you're contributing. So people look at you as the authority in the community as far as like knowing what, what, what the software can do and how to use it. So it's like all of those benefits come with it. And, and that's what's so great is you get to do something good for the community and just know that it's paying off and not have to worry about it or measure it towards, towards what yeah. your goals are. Yeah, I mean, that's I, I an really important point because I think it's easy for, especially as business owners, and understandably, but you're always looking at the bottom line, right? Um, you're always thinking about, you know, every minute you want it to be billable. That's the goal, you know? Um, mm-hmm. But again, you got to look at kind of the bigger picture. It's, you know, we do a... Um, an annual retreat every year we're, we're fully distributed. So working from home is like, is our normal. Um, so while there obviously were, um, you know, some things that happened with the pandemic that did, um, shake things up a bit, you know, we we were by and large used to working from home and we have for, you know, 10 years now. So, um, but we do an annual retreat every year. We fly out everybody to one spot, one location. Usually we get like a big house cause there's a lot of us and, and we uh, we do a lot of we work we play we have fun and and you know that early on when we first started doing that it, again we're questioning it like well what's the benefit here other than just getting together and you know um, hanging out and stuff like because it's a big cost right what's the benefit but what we quickly realized is just the camaraderie that it's being formed and building and um, people getting to know each other on a more personal level like that you can't you can't put a price tag on that you can't track it but you see it and and the work um, reflects it you know and I think contributing. Um, to your point is very similar, right? It's hard to track everything. It's hard to put price tags on everything, but you see it, you see the value across the board, um, by doing this. And I, the, another reason I like five to the future is I think it just puts more, it makes it easier for other companies to look at what people like what we're doing and other, other companies, um, for five to the future or even individuals, I, I say companies, but you could be a freelancer and dedicating five of your time for five to the future. That's fine. You know, that's great. Um, but it, it can kind of validate what we're doing and maybe open the door that other companies could could do the same. And there's a lot of great companies in WordPress that are doing this. Like you said, WP Engine contributes a hell of a lot and has for a long time. Um, so it just helps, I think, for for the companies to talk about it in a more official capacity. You know, I'm going to I'm going to pull up a chart here. I just sent it to you all as well. Uh, just a couple of visualizations. Uh, from uh, Jean Baptiste, uh, just, you know, based on company or whatever. Uh, yeah, just kind of interesting to see, you know, the, the contributions and uh, all that. I've seen pretty different uh, charts. I don't know exactly how these are compiled. Uh, I saw one chart uh, on a tweet where Google had like 20 contributors in 5.5, and here it's listed as six for 5.5. This is contributors for, you know, WordPress 5.5. Uh, but uh, but yeah, still just interesting to kind of see these. I even see halfway down there's a, a, a red bubble showing required as the company name, which I'm assuming is it's a it's an error in the in the, in the chart collection. Uh, you know, required data was a very pop. You know, like name is required or whatever. Anyway, I'm assuming unless unless there's a WordPress company called Required that I don't know of that's very prolific in the space. Uh, but, I'm not uh, familiar. Yeah, I, yeah, I love this stuff, though. I think it's yeah, this is great just to see like, I mean, there's obviously companies doing a lot more than us. I, in my opinion, every minute you spend contributing is is a good thing. You're like, I get it. Like you, you, you do what you can. Um, and um, every minute being contributed in some way, whether it's core or otherwise, is is good for the project and good for WordPress. So it's cool to see this, especially the visuals. I love the visuals when it comes okay. to stats and data. Anthony, I need one uh, of those uh, magic walls like CNN has, and they all have with the with the election stuff, where we can just start clicking like companies and contributions <laughs> and tickets, and things start moving around on the screen. Did anyone else spend uh, a couple minutes last night dragging states into uh, election columns? Yesterday, there was a 
I can't remember which. It was some <laughs> really nice. It worked great on the app on the the. I'm sorry, on my phone. And yeah, like yeah, you could just drag Tennessee into a different column and and see cool. the electoral college uh, kind of change and yeah. Uh, I love the was, interactive maps, awesome. they're, and they're all they're they're starting to get a lot more a little more different from each other, like the different websites. So like I'm looking at like Wall Street Journal, New York Times, and CNN, and others, and they're <laughs> all just a little bit different, but it's it's cool. I I, lo I love data, so seeing it like visualized and being able to play with it is really neat. Yeah, I, I had a, I got a kick out of those those live electoral maps, and and I I, I actually uh, one of the uh, for I think it was CNN that they were they were showing it, and he was just like, oh yeah, look, let me get this slider to show you who's underperforming, who's overperforming, <laughs> and he's just like parsing away these counties, and you're starting to see this data just bubbling up to the top, and it's just mm -hmm. it looks so effortless. It's really interesting how they can do yeah. that. I mean, um, man, it's, it's amazing how many. How many how many individual contributors? I'm seeing 32 contributors in your company. That is awesome. We we're we're in the 20s right now at WP Engine, and we were we we're, were like celebrating about that. But that's that's awesome. Yeah, I don't know. This is just for the most recent release. Oh, that's just core too. I'm just looking at at uh, at at, core, at at just the, the profiles, and that's one thing that we found also is like there are people that don't have WordPress profiles at our company that are mm -hmm. contributing, and that's just not tracked. Um, and those are sort of the, the areas where it's like, it's just crazy when you when you can take a look back and just see how many people in your company are, are, are having an impact on the community itself. And, and it's also like one of those things where I don't see many other pieces of software that do this. Are there any that you can think of that just have this kind of community uh, presence or this focus on community presence? It's a good question. Um, not none that come to mind, but I'm also not that involved in those other communities. So um, I would expect any kind of successful or popular open source pro project probably does in some capacity, um, yeah. but maybe not as official as as you know tracking it under like a five for the future tag or something. But um, I would expect there's something, right? Because how else does Drupal continue to grow? Um, and you know, yeah. it's a great platform. It's obviously doesn't have the the um, as much usage as WordPress, but it's also still a very good platform. Um, and it's a big platform too, right? So there's a lot of people contributing to that. There's, uh, yeah. th there's talk. I remember Matt has talked about, um, uh, you know, uh, contribution fatigue or, you know, like just, uh, as a project is around for a long time, sometimes people just expect other people to contribute to it. Um, we were just talking earlier about um, the annual survey, the uh, contributor survey. Um, the WordPress 2019 uh, contributor survey has been released. And uh, it's usually we get a lot of this information from Matt during State of the Word. And so usually we get sort of just the highlights, you know, 10, 10 to 11 slides great visuals to just kind of show little bits of, you know, who contributed and from what countries. Uh, this year, it feels like a dump. It's 165 slides in this document. Um, <laughs> one that uh, that I'm on right now, uh, slide number 92, the involvement barriers, uh, you know, talking about based on the survey, um, the reason that people don't communicate or contribute uh, might be because of lack of time. Uh, second most popular reason is that they need to earn money. So like they, you know, between working on contributing or, you know, uh, earning money for clients, like even sometimes, even if they don't have client work, sometimes you have to hustle to find the clients. And that's, you know, that feels like mm -hmm. time, even if you're not literally working on a project, it's kind of hard to, to take yourself away from trying to find, you know, new clients or whatever. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's some interesting stuff in this. Uh, there's a lot to Pars, uh, uh, Anthony or Brad, did either of y'all find any other interesting uh, bits of data on this page, on this uh, survey? I'm, I'm looking at some right now, and it's like it, it's really interesting that. Uh, oh, where is it? Um, I was looking at the number of WordCamps attended over the past year for for folks in the community, and a majority yeah. of people have been to either one or two. Um, Slide and, ninety five. And, Slide ninety five, yeah, yeah, no, but it also on nine, on ninety seven, it shows that a majority of the people that do go to multiple, it looks like, or, or one or, or or two, go to their local or a five hour drive distance away. Mm -hmm. um, and I find that interesting because I'm I'm deep in Texas, so for me that means just going to San Antonio or to the Austin. Um, but I, I I guess like I like a five hour drive away would 
that's pretty interesting that that folks that are kind of more in the middle of America can kind of jump out to other states word camps a lot easier than Texas. I don't really think about that much. I'm I'm yeah, interested. I, think to, the, well, I was just going to say ahead, I'm interested no. to see what this uh with this I you know for for 2020 when they released the the data I don't want to see 2020. I want to see like all the data going up to it, and I want to see how WordCamp attendance and how contribution changes during the during you know quarantine and the pandemic. Like uh, I think a lot of us thought that contributions might just skyrocket uh, during this year, and it sounds like they are doing really well with five six. They have a lot of new contributors. Uh, of course, five six is is famously uh, the first uh, all women led release team in WordPress. Uh, so there is a lot of first time, you know, core contributors that are, that are getting kind of onboarded from that. Uh, but I don't think that we're going to see in 2020, I don't think we're going to see some big spike in contributions starting in, you know, starting in March or February, uh, like, like, you know, we might've hoped, I think, I think a lot of us were still, I think actually we will. Yeah. Uh, because the, the, the criteria, I guess, or not, or the, the, the way to get props within the project has kind of expanded over that time, I feel like. Um, oh. And I know that people are kind of more more accurately tracking the, the props as far as like if somebody creates a ticket mm -hmm. um, towards an issue or found a bug, that person is getting props in that. And people that are kind of doing notes and doing other things are now getting props within the releases. So I would imagine, I hope that we're, we're, we're going to see an increase just by those sorts of changes alone. Um, I've noticed just around uh, around me, just people that I know are getting way more involved than ever before. So that's that's kind of cool. Uh, I, I've had a lot of people that I didn't expect to get involved in the WordPress community hitting me up and saying, "Hey, I want to start joining meetings and helping out." Like, <laughs> super cool. <laughs> Great. Way. I mean, it's a good way to dive in. Like, if you go back to that slide you were talking about, um, slide ninety two about uh, barriers to contributing. You know, the top few: lack of time, need to earn money, work is too demanding. Um, you know, like I, we can all understand that, right? Like we all get that. And and then for a little bit further down is burnout, another one, right? Like so, if you have a full time job, um, and you're unable unable to contribute um, via your work, then w what are your options? Will you do it in your free time, right? And that's that's the burnout one right there because that's a big um, concern that we always have is that anyone at our company, like if you log off from work and then you just log in and start doing like, you know, side hustle projects and continuing to code and then you're basically, you know, in the zone or coding how many hours a day, you know, instead of eight, <laughs> maybe 12, 14, 16, who knows? Um, and that is what ultimately for many people will lead to burnout. So, you know, I think people that are very interested in contributing and doing it in a way that they can still support themselves and their family and stuff, um, you know, should look for companies that maybe they could join where they could have more time to do it. Um, you know, uh, and, and sometimes you can by contrib it's kind of like chicken or the egg, but by contributing, you can actually kind of raise your status during that hiring process. Right. Cause if they sit down at, you know, uh, across from me, Anthony and, and you say, what have you done? Show me your work and say, well, here's all the, everything I've worked on with WordPress right here on track. Check it out. You can see all my yeah, code. Here's a query. Like, that's a huge, <laughs> Yeah, that's a huge uh, piece on your resume, you know. Um, so, you know, I think it, I think it's interesting. It doesn't, you know, I understand that not everybody wants to go to work at a company, and I, I totally get what this means. It also just all depends on your situation, right? Like I was contributing and doing stuff a lot more earlier on myself personally when I first got started at Web Dev Studios when we first started and really got into WordPress. Uh, but now my, you know, my life is different. I have a son. I, you know, I'm, I'm running a, a 40 plus person company. So um, my main goal is to do what do what i can to, to allow my team to contribute is and and i'd still contribute in other ways but not as much really on the code side <laughs> so um but you know so there's options right like if you're really passionate about it dive in um and if you really need to find a way to make it work from a financial standpoint you know align yourself with a company that that is really passionate about wordpress and contributing and and you know there, and there's a lot of them out there now which is awesome yeah, and I think also like an important thing to call out if there are people out there that don't have the company, reach out to companies if you're contributing and try and get sponsorship so that you can try and make that your job or at least pay you yeah. off, like pay some of the bills, <laughs> uh, especially if you're if you're making use of that time to to help the community. It's uh, yeah, people should should be getting paid if they can. <laughs> uh, let's let's change subjects a little bit here. Um... Hmm, what's a fun thing? I mean, uh, I guess one thing to talk about since uh, since I got the page up uh, is um, Brad. You have a series of books 
yeah. called the Professional WordPress. Uh, your most recent one is a uh, Professional WordPress Plugin Development, uh, which you did with uh, JJJ and uh, Justin Tadlock. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the Professional WordPress Plugin series? Yeah, absolutely. So like you said, the latest book, Professional WordPress Plugin Development, it's actually second edition. And that's an important Ooh. note because the first edition was released in 2011. So it's old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's old. <laughs> uh, it's nine years old, which in technology is you might as well just throw it away because it's, you know, everything's different. Um, but it was a very fun book to write. So the um, my first book was called Professional WordPress Design and Development. Um, and that was more of a kind of holistic look at, you know, writing code around WordPress, plugins, themes, really everything. Um, this book is really more laser focused on plugins specifically. Um, and you can imagine, uh, it's, it's packed with a lot. It's over 400 pages. Um, there's a lot of information here, but basically since there's a nine year gap, generally a, a second edition, you're looking to update about a third of it, refresh it. You know, this is basically a full rewrite cause everything was needed updated. You know, like we were able to carry over a little bit of it, but so much had changed. Um, like things like the rest API didn't exist. Uh, yeah, obviously Gutenberg and the, and the block editor did, didn't exist. JavaScript was, while it was uh, around, was uh, much less of a <laughs> critical component in some areas. Uh, a lot of just jQuery, you know. So things have changed. So, but I've been asked about this book for 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 years, and I've been trying to get a get the project off the ground. Um, this past year, uh, we actually got well, year I guess year and year and a half maybe now. Um, we were able to get it get it going. I. Uh, Justin Tadlock co-authored the first one with me as well. We brought John in um, as the third author. We wanted to bring in someone really competent in the JavaScript area. Um, so once we had the team, then I knew we were in a good spot, right? So because I trust those guys are extremely smart. The the trick is like everyone says, right? Just work with people smarter than you. So that's why I got those two guys. <laughs> They're smarter than me. Uh, but it's a really good book. You know, I like it. Um, if you're just getting into WordPress development, it's uh, I think it's I would say it's requir required reading. I'm a little biased, but I think it is. Um, and if you're already doing it, I like it as a um, as a reference. It's a reference guide, right? Because we can never remember all this stuff. <laughs> so uh, it could be quickly like, hey, how do I add a, a menu? I forget the actual, you know, the function or the parameters for the menu. How do I add a menu? You can just go to the index, you know, add menu, go right to the page, get the code. You know, I like the PDF version or the ebook because you can uh, search it, copy paste. Mm -hmm. uh, some people prefer prefer the physical but you know so it's it's got a lot for everybody but definitely if you're really getting into uh plug -in development or if you're looking to take your skills to the next level check it out because i do believe um you're gonna get your value um and there's a lot of great knowledge in there to be had so uh i hope people enjoy it it's awesome that is cool did you guys uh, read it <laughs> i i have not i i uh well you could probably write it anthony so you probably don't need it but I, I maybe not. I mean, I think people give me way too much credit sometimes. I I, I was actually talking with a, co a coworker the other day, and and she was like, "Oh, well, I'm non-technical," and I'm like, "You use WordPress more than me. Like, come on, you're technical." It's a such an interesting thing. But I I, I uh, that's interesting to me because like in my day job, I I'm usually working towards a goal, and a lot of times my goals aren't make a plugin to do this thing, um, and and that 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 it 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 stinks that I can't be focusing on that and seeing those trends mm -hmm. change over time. Like, how do you build plugins? So that's sort of where I'm like, I need to read that book because I want to see what those trends are and what, what has changed in plugin yeah. building. Because I think my, my view on plugin building is probably maybe five years old now and there's a lot that's changed. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm constantly learning with the block editor and things like that and trying to kind of learn new frameworks and JavaScript to keep myself fresh. But in in the WordPress context, I don't feel like I'm writing a ton of JavaScript things, or I'm writing a ton of plugins, which is something I wish uh, I did more of. And I think I need to get your book now. <laughs> yeah, check it out for sure. I think um, obviously being open source, like the question we get a lot is how do you keep it? You know, how do you? It's how how is it not like out of date as soon as it's printed? And well, there's some truth to that, right? Like there's you know WordPress is continuing to evolve um, and grow. Um, you know, the great thing about WordPress is everything's uh, backwards compatible, or that's the goal anyways. Um, and generally speaking, it doesn't, um, we really teach best practices. And if you follow best practices with WordPress coding, you know, your, your, your plugin should continue to work for a long time. Now, it, it doesn't mean at one point they won't stop working, but they shouldn't explode your website, right? So usually what happens is the new features introduced that just didn't exist when you wrote the book. 
Um, like the REST API is a good example. That came out a few years after we wrote the first book. Didn't exist at the time, so of course it's missing. Um, but by and large, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty good book. And, and we also really dig into um, how to finance is because ultimately the best resource you have, the best piece of documentation is the code base. So we actually open up WordPress core files and we start going through, how do I navigate these files? How do I find answers to the questions I might have? How do I find a particular hook I'm looking for? Um, if, if I can't find an article online about it, cause obviously there's no way we can cover absolutely everything you can do with WordPress. It's so flexible. So we, we actually are teaching people and giving them the tools to kind of get comfortable and dig into the code themselves because the answers are all there. You just have to kind of know how to navigate it a little bit. How do you search for hooks, you know, filters and actions? How do you, how do you navigate the doc blocks and things like that? So, um, obviously make it clear you shouldn't edit core and save it, but it's great for a reference. All your answers are there. You just have to learn how to kind of uh, work with it. Yeah, and that's kind of how I got involved in WordPress, like WordPress itself by tearing apart the core code. That's how I learned PHP. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't that I had the goal to learn PHP. It's the goal that it, I had the goal of, oh, I needed this plugin to do something. And let me tear apart this code to see if there's an example of how to do this. Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> I, I'm very much an experimenter. That, and that's how I learned, too. And that, you know, Hello Dolly is was my first plugin. I just went in there and started hacking at it. And, hey, I can change the lyrics to Hello Dolly. That's cool. You know, and as develop, like I had a development background, I just wasn't, um, I was in the more of the Microsoft side with ASP and uh, classic ASP and .NET. Um, so I wasn't as, I wasn't familiar with PHP, but I, you know, I could hack around a little bit, but you know, so that piqued my interest. I'm like, well, that's cool. Let's take a little further. And then I ripped that out and hooked it into like an RSS feed so I could control it remotely. And, you know, it just kind of started my passion for doing this type of stuff. And I think just, that's a, a reason why I know there's this love hate with Hello Dolly. I think it's actually good say. because... <laughs> It's it's a great thing people can get in there and hack away at and instantly understand what's happening and it's a very basic plugin so I actually think it's good to be in there just as an example plugin for people to hack away at because um, that's what I did so <laughs> not you're not on team goodbye Dolly <laughs> nah, I mean I wouldn't I wouldn't be opposed to maybe updating the lyrics to something else but uh, <laughs> I mean, I, or, or replacing it with something that maybe as a better example, you know, I know how like the content, you know, it makes a blog post and a page and it kind of shows you how to do some different things with that dummy content. So why not have a plugin in there that's maybe got a little bit more going on, but is a good tool to learn. You know, I would, I would absolutely support something like that over hello Dolly. We we need like a hello Dolly for the good, for the block editor. Yeah. Like Mm -hmm. there needs to be a, uh, a plugin for that too. I don't know what yeah. it could be. And that's though. gotta be clever. I mean, the, the, the editor is definitely the most intimidating part of WordPress right now. I think if for many people, mainly because it's, you know, by and large, most of us that have done WordPress development are on the PHP side of the house. And, you know, with the new, um, editor, you need to get more comfortable working with, um, you know, JavaScript and react. So, um, it's, it's different. And if, and, and, you know, as humans, we don't like change <laughs> and I think we're generally resistant to it initially. So, um, and, and when you're learning a new language, it can be frustrating because um, you go from knowing something really well to maybe feeling more like a beginner or or not knowing what the hell you're doing. And that can be frustrating. Um, so that's definitely a very intimidating area that I've seen for a lot of people. And for, on, to be very honest, me, too, like that's another reason why we brought John in, because I knew I was like, JavaScript's not my strength. It never has been. And for me to like write chapters about it would would be doing a disservice to the readers because I would. I would be hoping what I write is correct and I'd have to do a lot of research, but I wouldn't feel comfortable about it. Right. So, um, but it's an area that like, clearly it's the direction the web is going, not just WordPress, but obviously the direction WordPress has gone and is going as well as the web. So it's an area that people do need to start getting more comfortable with. So I agreed, like there should be like a built in, you know, very simple block that you could go in there and kind of modify. I mean, there's nothing easier than like, I make a change to some code, save it, refresh my screen and I see that change, right? Like that right there is how I learn best. And I think that's how a lot of developers pick up as well. They just try things, break things, see what works, right? See what shows up on the screen. <laughs> yeah. On, on a dev like local that. environment, right? Not on production. <laughs> no, nah, always on prod. <laughs> <laughs> Only on a Friday, right? Only on a Friday. <laughs> so so um, changing gears a little bit, we didn't talk about this beforehand. There was something that recently happened that's uh, shaped uh, the world, and I didn't talk to you about this in advance. My apologies for springing it on you, but obviously I'm talking about Halloween uh, and uh, everyone's <laughs> <laughs> everyone's Halloween costumes. Uh, is is uh, I I hope it's okay if we talk about this, Anthony? Can we talk uh, about your Halloween costume? 
I've been so anxious the last 48 hours about my costume, but okay. <laughs> You're watching CNN. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I've got I've got your tweet up, um, and uh, you and your wife uh, dressed up. Uh, I, I'm assuming that's that's Beetlejuice. That I was Beetlejuice, at? yes, yes. And and my my wife was just all around spooky, <laughs> spooky. Uh, yeah, spooky. yeah, yeah. And... Actually, I have a really funny story about the Beetlejuice costume. Um, mm -hmm. So I decided to shop for my costume the day before Halloween which meant that I had to go brave waiting in line to go into a costume shop. Uh, of course, I was wearing like double mask and everything. I, I was in a hazmat suit, essentially. Um, I get in there and they're out of the costumes, of course, and they're out of Beetlejuice costumes. And I was dead set on the Beetlejuice because my hair is fading and it looks like moss, so I can kind of pull off the green hair without trying. Uh, so low effort was the goal. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I ended up having to go with a... Um, a prisoner outfit uh, because it's striped. It's just not the right stripes. It's not vertical. They're sideways. Um, and uh, I settled on that one. And then I'm driving home, and I look to the to the side of the road, and there's a, a thrift store with a Beetlejuice costume in the window. So I <laughs> cut the wheel, turned around, flew in there. I said, "Get that thing off the rack. I need it." And uh, and that's how I ended up in a Beetlejuice costume. When, when when they were like, "Which one do you want?" Did you go Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice? I only said it twice. You know what happens on the third time. <laughs> um, and uh, Brad, you and your family dressed up uh, as DC characters: uh, yeah. Batman, Wonder Woman, and the Flash. Uh, that's can you right. Tell us about I was that? Batman. Every you know. Dress for the job you want, right? So I ended up with Batman. I, so we always do family costumes. My son just turned five. So last year was like his the first year of him like really kind of getting into trick-or-treating. Um, so it's been a big topic since last year for him of what we're going to wear. And uh, somehow he settled on the Flash. He likes the Flash. He really wanted to be Reverse Flash, which if you – I didn't even know who – like wow. About that's Reverse it. Flash, but that's mm -hmm. like a really obscure uh, villain <laughs> in DC. Uh, you're never gonna find a Reverse Flash costume. I can tell you that because he's yellow. And wouldn't you think oh. Reverse Flash would be slow? But he's that's not. That's what I was gonna ask. <laughs> is he slow? No, he's fast. So I'm like, I don't even understand. He's just yeah, he wears a yellow outfit instead of a red. So I I don't know. But luckily, I talked him out of that. He also wanted to be. I don't know if you guys watch Teen Titans Go, which is actually a pretty funny show. But he's wanting to be like Cyborg and Beast Boy and. Again, costumes are going to be very hard to find. <laughs> so I'm kind of glad he ended up on Flash, something we could you know, find easily. I got Batman, yeah. which I know I'll get more use out of that costume in, in years to come. So oh, um, yeah. my wife was Wonder Woman. But, yeah, we had a great time. I mean, I was worried um, about trick-or-treating um, and what would happen, you know, and if they would just cancel it in our area. And I know every area is different. But, you know, for especially for kids and everything that's been going on, um, you know, it's been it's been tough for them because, you know, it's just it's not, it's obviously been a very abnormal year for everybody and kids um, don't fully understand everything. Right. So it makes it tough. But so we had a really great Halloween, like everybody got into it. You know, people had like fire pits at the end of their driveways. Everybody had tables out. You know, there's just as many people passing out candy as any other year. And honestly, like, I feel like they all felt bad for the kids. So they were like like full size candy bars like just i mean i i don't think i've ever seen this much candy from one kid and we didn't even go to that many houses and it literally has like i don't know three or four pails full of candy like people were just like here's 10 candy bars take it so it was great we had a great time the weather was great i'm really happy because my son had an awesome time a lot of kids i could tell were having a lot of fun and from what i saw online it looked like by and large that what's what's happened all over the u.s so I'm a big Halloween fan. I think you guys know that. So I was, uh, and especially <laughs> since it's like my son's like the years that he's like going to be the most into it. I'm glad that it, it all came together and we had a really great night. That's awesome. I, I, I really upset one kid when I was passing out candy. So I, I was doing that thing where I would give out two bags every once in a while because it was just like, there weren't that many people, but there were enough people to like pass out the candy to, and I wanted to get rid of it all. Um, and there was this one kid that I, I gave I gave him a bag. Uh, he was dressed as Ash Ketchum, 
And then his brother was dressed as a Charmander, and he walks over, and I give him a bag, but I realized the bag I give him had gave him had like two pieces of candy in it. So I felt bad, and I was like, here's a second one. But his brother did not understand the concept of that was an emptier bag. Here's a second one. <laughs> and he was very yeah. upset with me for giving a second one to yeah. his brother. <laughs> and they walked off before I could realize that kids don't get that, and could, I couldn't fix the situation. So right now there's an Ash Ketchum somewhere plotting my death. Yes, yeah, he's, he's got this toilet paper. <laughs> ready for your house <laughs> next year he's he's right next is on the calendar right next year <laughs> that's so, funny so, uh did you dress up docker no, no, no i i uh i am a grump and i don't love Aww. doing that stuff uh, but I'll oh, do guys. whatever, like if my wife, my, my wife loves Halloween, it's a huge holiday to her. So like I have been more active with my Halloween and, and I've attempted to be less grump, uh, this year. Um, you know, she was very concerned about, uh, we just moved to a new spot and it's a very much like the sort of place that people would knock on your door and the sort of neighborhood that there would be kids going around knocking versus our old place, which was like, you know, on the third floor and there's a gate and there's like buzzers and stuff like this is a door or whatever. And it would actually be a great place. I would love to be the old man giving out, you know, costume or <laughs> candy. Um, so she was very concerned about uh, how we would do that. Um, and I was, you know, talking about like the, the, you know, building a little shoot for candy and dropping candy down mm -hmm. a shoot and all that stuff. And, um, I think in the end we just ended up <clears throat> drinking a beer on the back porch with our lights off in the front. So no one would <laughs> knock on our door. Uh, and I, you know, I don't know if in this neighborhood, I don't even know if, if kids ended up going out the same way that they usually do. I think that there were like a couple yards cause we backyard a couple yards, uh, down from us. Um, there was some sort of Halloween thing and everyone had their mask on their, their face masks, uh, Mm -hmm. And so maybe that's what people were doing were some sort of like in their pod, they would have like a, a Halloween yeah, kind of thing. I, I had some friend, a number of friends and even a few family members that did something somewhere. They would go to like a house outdoor with just a couple families just to do something for the kids, which is a cool option too, right? If it's mm -hmm. people you feel safe, you know, around, uh, that's, that's a good option too. I, I will say my, my wife uh, loves dressing up as a Romulan as much as possible. Uh, so I can't, she was dressed up as a, as a Romulan on Halloween, but she was also dressed up, uh, yesterday. And so like, I don't know, I don't know if that, it's, it's her birthday month, uh, November. So she can do whatever she wants the whole month. Uh, if she wants to dress up as a Halloween and work from home, uh, or if she wants to dress up. Why as not? Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Uh, so, awesome. so I, I, again, I can't quite say if that was a Halloween thing or not, but yeah. It was me and Romulan <laughs> hanging out in our backyard, avoiding children. That was my house. As one does. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, uh, WordPress 5.6 is coming out soon. We, we talked about that uh, earlier. Uh, WordPress 5.6 had a couple features dropped. Um, full site editing, like uh, block-based site editing is not uh, going to be in 5.6. Um, one of the things that is is auto updates uh and there was some conversation on wp tavern which is apparently now wordpress tavern which i, I can't get over now uh but yeah on wordpress tavern there is a conversation about um uh should developers be able to uh disable auto auto update you know from their clients should they be able to kind of hide it uh which i thought was interesting um this this is I, first off i have to admit I thought auto updates for core was a new thing, but in the article I learned that um, actually developers could enable auto updates in, in the back end, I guess. That was new to me. Uh, and the idea that they could also hide the feature uh, so that their clients, you know, who get a site wouldn't just click on auto update. That was that was pretty interesting. Uh, did you all have any thoughts on either of that? I Actually, I had a question for Brad. Have you have you seen folks using or wanting to gravitate towards using uh, auto updates? Um, not not so much. I mean, our clients, anybody we support, um, we do very intentional updates. So all of that is is shut off, right? We don't want anything to auto update um, because honestly, all of our code um, we're generally managing through repositories anyway. We, anyway, so. Um, I mean, we would do the update when it comes out, but we need to make sure it goes through, you know, Git. 
um, versus just updating directly on the server. So by and large, no, um, just from the professional side of the house, I haven't seen a lot of people using that. I, I don't have a problem with with it myself or like on my personal blog and stuff, I have it running. Um, but I think anything of importance, um, while updating is important and you should do it as quick as you can, you want to do it in a more controlled environment, test things out, you know, and then roll that out to production. So I I like the fact it's an option. I like, I I think this goes more for those folks that are like trying to do that DIY WordPress where they kind of want to just still have a, an update option. So that's, it's still really great for the, the community as a whole. I think that's awesome. Well, the, uh, the article brings up that the sort of people who might want to hide, um, you know, I was thinking of, of, um, agencies that were building for their, you know, for customers and maybe not trusting their customers. Um, but it actually mentioned that like maybe WP engine wants to do auto updates. And so maybe WP engine would want to disable that from, from, you know, the consumer, uh, because they want to handle it on, I guess, server side or whatever. Uh, is that, is that, am I getting that right? Does that sound right? As an example? Well, of- yeah, I, yeah, WP Engine actually has a, a a product that does the smart. It's called the Smart Plugin Manager, and it does like pl- visual regression testing. So, like, I think people. That's one of the things that's important is like auto updates are, are really great, but they're not going to replace those uh, those tailored solutions for updates. And I think those will never go away just because it takes uh, some level of either automation or manual testing to verify that updates are actually going to work, right? Like, let's say you, you're auto updating a WooCommerce plugin. Of course, it's not going to fatal error your site, but you don't know if you can still do a checkout. Like those sorts mm-hmm. of things are always going to be constant. And, uh, and I think, I think we're going to learn a lot, like the, the, the trends in tech itself are, are, are changing to where people are kind of understanding. I, I need to write unit tests for every single thing that I build, or I need to have a flow to test buying a cart. Or, or, or adding something into the cart, and uh, and I think that that over time those things are going to get more easy and they're going to become more of the standard. And that's sort of where where auto updates are great. But if you can hook those into whatever custom way you test your stuff, that's what's what's most important. Um, so yeah, I, th- I think to me when I think of auto updates, I think of of folks that are just like DIY WordPressers that just mm-hmm. don't want to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think what one thing that's kind of interesting about the this setting or this story um, is the fact that it is a setting, right? And um, a, a setting that'll be displayed, it looks like under the update screen, uh, dashboard update section. That doesn't happen often. Like to get a new setting in the UI of WordPress um, mm-hmm. is is honestly kind of a hard thing. I haven't seen it happen very often. In fact, I've, I've probably seen more settings removed than I have added over the last 10 years because it, I, it's always about decisions, not options, right? That's always been kind of the, the mantra. And if you, you know, we mentioned Drupal earlier, but if you um, use Drupal, and I haven't used the most recent versions of Drupal, but I remember in the past when I was used Drupal, there it was just like, and, and Joomla is another one where it was just like so oh, yeah. many options. It's almost yeah. like iPhone compared to Android. Like Android has so many options, like too many options, settings, you know what I mean? There's almost too much. You get lost. You, you can't figure things out. You don't even know where to go to, to work with certain things where um, iPhone, while there's a lot of settings, I think they try to make more decisions, make it a little more streamlined. And WordPress, I know, has always really coveted that, making sure there's not, and it's intentional, they don't want the user to go in and see 50 different checkboxes on a one setting page, and yeah. there's 10 different settings pages. That's extremely intimidating. So the fact that they're introducing this as a, a, a UI option, something you'll see in the dashboard, I think is pretty interesting. Hey, yeah, I that one in a... Site Health are the two that really stood out to me. I wanted to give a, a shout out to uh, NW Cruiser who's watching and says uh, that they're not a fan of automatic updates without a built-in recovery mechanism. Um, they go in further uh, talking about when updates are ran and something breaks on the site, you either have to restore backup and if you have an e-commerce site, uh, potentially lose uh, orders, which is for sure. And this is uh, yeah. worth mentioning that something similar did happen. Uh, again, WordPress Tavern has uh, an article about an auto update system uh, misfire that happened, and I don't know how big a deal this was, uh, but uh, yeah, Mark Root Wiley uh, tweeted that uh, you know a random production site auto updated itself to WordPress 5.5.3 Alpha, uh, which um, yeah, I mean I don't know what version they were on, but I, I don't think you want to be on like 5.3, you know, 
alpha <laughs> like you know it, it, that didn't sound like uh you know a good situation for for him or his clients yeah was it i think it was just a tagging issue wasn't it i'm not too sure what what the what the problem was but i don't yeah i i, I asked around within wp engine and and we didn't see any any kind of reports around this that that that's kind of why i missed this one this is kind of news to me yeah, I yeah mean, it, it, there was a short window when they rolled it back, apparently, too. It sounds like it was maybe 20 minutes or something, so the oh, average wow. user maybe didn't even realize it happened um, unless yeah. they happened to be in there during that window. It's, it certainly sounded like a like an edge case, um, but it you know it does, in the conversation of you know having auto-updates up and you know potentially something happening to your e-commerce site or uh, to, to you know, one of your client sites, it, it has it has happened at this point that a wrong version has gone out. Uh, yeah. and you know, hopefully that is resolved. Um, I'm sure, uh, also, you know, like a couple of years ago we were talking about, uh, making sure that there was the handshakes between, uh, the server and your site to make sure that you weren't getting, you know, malicious auto updates, mm -hmm. uh, which, uh, was a thing, you know, a conversation. I think that was a, a, a bug, uh, for like five or six years before before it was finally added, so I'm assuming that's in now. That you know they talked about it a couple of years ago. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, uh, I mean, you got to keep that trust. I, I mean, Matt's been talking about this for years, right? He talks about WordPress OS. WordPress as the operating system of the web. You know, he he likes to compare it in terms of like browsers now. What version of Chrome are you on? I'm on Chrome, right? And Chrome set the standard there. And now all browsers do that. And and thank you know every web developer out there is thankful now because it's not what version. I.e., it's just like, all right, we'll support the latest version of these browsers because mm -hmm. that's yeah. all we can do. Everybody is running the latest version unless they're intentionally rolling it back. But the average user does does not do that or know how to do that. So, you know, I get I get what he's doing. I think the um, I think there's a long road to to ever get there. And honestly, I think for like. You know, enterprise level e-commerce, it's never going to happen because you have to, unless you have an, like you said, Anthony, like an automated, you know, uh, system in place that runs all of those unit tests, does a full checkout and everything, and then triggers the or or after the auto update, and if everything passes, it keeps it, and if not, it reverts it back, and that's a hundred auto, hundred percent automated, maybe, but even that seems like only massive stores or or, or enterprise level companies are going to have the funds and time to even invest in something like that, so. Um, but yeah. that's that's the beauty then, of WordPress with the flexibility. Like you either you can do this or not. Like it isn't you're not required to do this, and I can't imagine they would ever force it. And if it doesn't work for you, you just don't do it. You know, or you turn it off if if you need to. Um, so yeah, yeah, totally. So so uh, it's coming up on the end of the hour here. Um, you know, I do want to drop a, a note that the um, uh, 2020 uh, contributor survey is open so you know um i dropped a link in the 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 doobly-doo um feel free to click on that or just google uh you know 2020 wordpress contributor survey uh and fill it out so that's available and um yeah it's been it's been fun hanging out with y'all uh we, we covered a lot of stuff we were worried about maybe not having enough and this was a lot of fun chatting um anthony if uh people want to learn more about um your your halloween costume for next year uh yeah and what you're working on what's a good way to do that yeah just uh subscribe to notifications on my uh twitter handle uh at, at and pb you can just every single time i tweet get it right to your phone like just <laughs> wake you up in the middle of the night i i, I am known to tweet it in the middle of the night so yeah <laughs> hit that like button like and subscribe hit, hit, that the, right. hit the bell ding the bell <laughs> there it is the Jinx. The bell. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that bell. Uh, and uh, Brad, thanks so much for for joining us. If um, you know, we didn't even really. Well, I mean, we talked about web dev a lot. But uh, if people want to find out what you're what you're working on and and find out more about Web Dev Studios, what's a good way to do that? Yeah, I mean, you can check out our website, webdevstudios.com. I'd urge anyone um, listening to also look at our blog. I'm really proud of the blog content we put out. We talk about contributing. We also dedicate um, time internally, uh, even outside of Five for the Future. Um, w when there's downtime or, or even if it's not, if there's an interesting technology or something we want to talk about that, we'll give our, our team members time to uh, do some research and development and, and write some blog content, blog posts around it. So there's a lot of interesting 
topics um, and developer topics uh, as well uh, as other things like working remotely. We have a lot of topics around that, but we just some really thoughtful content. I really like the content we put out over the years. So, and that's webdevstudios.com slash blog. And if anyone wants to hit me up and subscribe to my notifications on Twitter, mm. which you probably don't, but uh, <laughs> Williams B a on Twitter, you can track me out. I'm pretty much Williams B a everywhere except I, for Instagram. I just skimmed through your ways. blog. I just skimmed through the blog and I've already laughed like twice at some of the content. Like yeah. it's funny and like in a good way, funny. <laughs> we try to have fun with it. Um, our, you know, editor in chief, if you will, or Coronado, our marketing specialist, she is our editor. She runs the blog. She helps take what our team writes and, you know, really uh, makes it sound great. And she uh, gets a lot of really cool gifts in there and stuff too. Yeah. So. I got me with the yeah. gifts. <laughs> yeah, I like our blog because it's like uh, there's a little bit about the company, obviously, right? But it's not just all about just us, right? It's it's hey, there's a new technology we're experimenting with, or this is how we did this or that or whatever. So we like to share a lot of our knowledge too. So it's a really good. There's a lot of great uh, information on there. That's super cool. Well, thanks so but much. Yeah, thanks for, for having me. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us, Brad. I really appreciate it. And uh, Anthony, it's always good to see you. Uh, next week on the show, we're gonna have Carrie Dills uh, talking. About about we haven't you decided in trouble. yeah uh we're, we're excited yeah, to have her though trouble get yeah, carrie coming on yeah uh i'm excited so, so join She's us awesome. we we uh do the stream uh every wednesday from three to four uh, uh pacific standard time so join us live uh next wednesday with carrie dills and you can follow uh the torque magazine um who produces these videos uh it's uh torquemag.io which stands for internet online uh, that's where we blog, um, and write our tutorials, uh, for, for WordPress. And, uh, you can follow us on Twitter at the Torque Mag, uh, on Twitter. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next week.